All right, we are live. So, what's up, Jack? Not much, Paul. Not much. How have you been? Been a while since you and I talked. It has been. It has been. So, Jack and I uh, have a a bromance on Twitter. So uh, we're we're dating on Twitter. It's fine. It's not gay or anything. No, no, no. <laughs> as long as it stays on Twitter. No. Nah, so, dude, like, uh, I I connected with Jack through. So everybody knows in the audience that they're going to gradually start rolling in here. Um, I'm not monetized yet because I didn't do the stuff to get monetized. I was being uh, rebellious about that. You know what I mean? Cause I didn't want to be controlled by advertisers, but I have to kind of get around it anyway. So I just put in the stuff. Um, but because I'm not monetized, I don't do super chats. I just look in the chat for questions. Um, and it takes a minute. Like when I like, it might take a minute for people to, to hop on the stream, you know, but that's okay. So, um, yeah, dude. So I was going to say to the audience that, it, you know, I, we just kind of connected through space, this whole men's help space. And you're one of those dudes that you're just a real person, <laughs> you know, like, and that's the whole problem right now. I think with this, like this whole arena is that people are very much trying to stay on brand, you know, and they're not real anymore. A lot of them, you know, and that's a challenge, right? I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I usually try to downplay myself a lot because, first of all, I don't want to get dragged into any of it. None of it. I want want to have nothing to do with it. And if anybody asks, I live in a box. Right. I'm a bum. I'm a bum. I'm poor. I live in a box. And all (laughs) the girls I date are heroin junkies who just happen (laughs) to think I look like their dealer. So perfect dealer game. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's it. Dude, that's actually a real thing. Like, I know. Up, it's like I got, I sell weed, you know, and the chicks are just like, oh, blah, like all over them, you know. The guy mm-hmm. who's got the coke and the e and all the stuff, man, he's the one going to the parties and pulling the girls. It's a dealer game. It really does work, unfortunately. I know. Uh, <laughs> so you got that going for you. You got like the, the you're you're like salt dating, but with heroin. You're like I'm oh. a heroin dealer. <laughs> like and you're like just kidding. I don't do heroin. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. The whole jokes aside, I'm not really a heroin dealer, but I have heard the stories. Like Coke seems to be very attractive to a lot of oh, girls. Yeah. And I knew a guy. So was so sad. Very intelligent guy. Had everything going for him. And, uh, well, even though weed is legalized in the Netherlands, he kind of had his own stash and Mm. he was making bank on it. But the problem was he started using from his own stash and Mm -hmm. then he got off the rails and now he thinks he's a wizard and that (laughs) hate needs infinitum and that the world is flat. Yeah. Wizard game, huh? That's not good. Don't use wizard game. (laughs) <laughs> Unless you're at a Renaissance festival, don't use Winter's Wizard game. I yeah, know, that's... man. It's it's a shame, really, because we have a coffee shop where I live, and in the Netherlands, coffee shop means uh, the place you buy weed. For uh, yeah, people who are wondering, but there are some hot chicks down there, and I'm like, I mean, I don't, mm-hmm. I, I don't participate in your lifestyle, but don't mind if I do, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely learned to separate myself because I was never a drug guy, man. Like never, Same. you know, Same. and, um, and, and then being in military and having to have security clearances and stuff, I, you don't want to mess around, you know, you definitely, um, get tested and all that stuff and it's just not worth it. You know what I mean? To, to get, to, to get involved with that. But, um, but yeah, so that's why too, you know, it's important to not make girls your focus we're here to get the girls. Right. But mm-hmm. we're not like our whole lives shouldn't be focused around that. Like God, dudes are going to literally throw their life away to party and to impress girls and to get, you know, Oh, you're, you're real and Coke. I'll rail Coke with you. It's like be on your own little point of origin. When I used to run strippers, which, you know, like something I used to do strippers and sex industry girls and some models and stuff. They, they, they're very much in a Coke. That's like a thing they do, you know? Ooh. And, um, it's just a like it's so bump it at parties or whatever they'll go you know they just do it it's just the very normal uh in that lifestyle but that's not something i've ever wanted to touch man like ever wanted to mess with and you don't have to you know you don't have to you're not going to control the girl it's your wife you know what i mean like mm-hmm. you know you're not going to control the girl but you're going to take notes too right like is she ltr material she's a uh, bump of coke in the bathroom and getting a little you know what i mean getting a little little lit Perfect no, dude, you just, you let people behave like they're going to behave. They dime themselves out 
and then you make selections. You know, I feel like guys get really caught up. Like she's not a good woman. She's doing this, that, and the other, like, man, just, just, just have fun, hang out. Just don't bring that girl into your life any further or any deeper. You know, I mean, it's pretty simple. I, but, know, um, I, I know what you mean. Like don't compromise your own virtues just to get laid. Mm -hmm. like, don't, don't um, ram your virtues down her throat either. But just yeah. take, like you said, Paul, take notes. How is she behaving? And is this someone I want to share longer than one night with? Nine mm -hmm. times out of 10 with the current state we're living in, it's a no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so just have fun, hang out, learn, be curious, up your skill with women. So when those, the ones that come along that are really good matches, you have skills, you know, you know how to communicate, you know how to game you can. And that's what, you know, that's what it's all about, you know, learning, having good experiences and, and the right people gravitate towards you, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but anyway, so we're doing a little new, kind of a new thing I started doing. I'm going to try to be consistent with it. I just hired an assistant. So, uh, she's uh, working remotely. I don't keep her on camera because it's another thing dude. like, People just like throw girls on cameras. Like I always, I'm always skeptical of that. Like the girls that I see and girls like my LTR, any other girls that I've been with or seen or see mm -hmm. my, my assistant's pretty hot too. Okay. I, they have lives outside of the internet. Like, I don't understand how you just dime a girl out. Like and then her dad sees you on your dating <laughs> pickup. You know what I mean? Pick up YouTube stream. Like that seems a little crazy to me. I um, know. I mean, well, first of all, what you just mentioned, they themselves have a private life. Second of all, private. I have been in the space long enough and I haven't been here that long, but long enough to see that if you do show even any one of your private life, some Spurg is going to look her up and they're going to yep. bother her or whatever. Second of right. all, you yep. can't please anyone. I was in a Twitter back and forth with someone a while ago. Right. And uh, what was it? I, I don't even remember what it was about, but it ended with me just saying, you know what? I bang sixes. There, you have it. Are you happy now? <laughs> Because you know what, Paul, I might post a picture of a girl. Some will yeah. say she's a 10. Some will say she's a four. I'm like, you know what? I date sixes. There. Everybody's yeah. happy. Right. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and brag. I, I do bottles and tents. No, you know what? I bang sixes. But at least I bang. So exactly. Done. Well, you, know what? <laughs> you know what it is, man? It's like, and I, I mean, I'm, I have in my opinion, in general, universal opinion, gorgeous girls around me and stuff. But here's my thing who actually cares about that right my focus is on the person that's coming to me for information and what they can do to get the girls that they want that's a whole different equation because i can walk into a place i'm not a bad looking dude i'm kind of jacked i have that kind of <laughs> yeah right and so and so I, I there's a certain subset of girls that are going to go for me no matter how retarded my game is Right. Like, and I, so in there, and these are hot girls too. So I could just kind of walk in and through SMV signals, have a hot girl want to be with me and maybe take photos with this girl, blow her privacy up, put her at risk for incel, you know, internet harassment and violence or whatever. And, and for what, like, does that mean that my, th that what I did to get her translates to a guy out in Netherlands, guy out in London, a guy out in Florida who looks different than me, acts different than me. You see what I mean? And so like my focus is on, on the game skills and the skills and because games really communication and getting that person along a line of getting what you want from them. But that also means they get what they want too. It's a kind of a benevolent self-interest, but it's using those communication skills to move a girl to a place of, you know, intimacy with you that, that that's going to be, each person has to figure out their own little formula. It's not a universal thing, but there are certain things of course that universally work when we're handling women. And so I'm more interested in putting out skills that will work for people and my, my focus is on what my clients are doing, you know what I mean, what my listeners are doing, and, and the results they're getting. Because if I can't get results for, for a guy who is, let's say, less SMV than me, okay, mm -hmm. well, what does that say about my skills then, right? I mean, my, my skills are SMV dependent now of course, then, right? That's, that's a bit, 
you know, it's a bit, that's a bit of problematic. I think, you know, I know I mean? what you mean. I mean, Troy Francis has hit on this multiple times. It doesn't necessarily. Um, okay. Looks matter. Let's get that straight out. Looks yeah, do matter, but looks are not the determining factor. Um, I have a certain type of look. You have a certain type of look. Right. Some girls mm -hmm. will say you're a nine. Some uh, girls will say you're a four. Likewise with me. Yeah. But that doesn't, no, oh, sorry. That shouldn't prevent us from stepping up to her for going for it. Exactly. Because you'll never know how far you can get. Troy even has a story in one of his books about uh, some, um, what was it? Construction worker friend he had who just stepped up to a uh, Kate Moss like model or something. And they mm -hmm. ended up on a date anyway. Because yeah. to him, those boundaries, those borders didn't exist for him he was just like no i think you're hot and i wanted to say hi like, yeah he didn't even yeah. think about leagues or how he looked or whatever but the thing you can take away from that is not necessarily oh he got the hot girl no that he did something that no matter how you look okay be honest you have to take care of yourself a bit blah blah, blah. you can't be a slob but what you can take away from that is what action did he undertake that was mm -hmm. approaching that was presenting himself no matter what based on the sheer fact that he found her attractive yep yep and yeah and so i i look at we get caught up too too much i think in like red pill spaces particularly we get caught more than some of the pickup spaces but we get caught up too much in trying to deduce everything down to empirical data and and looking at it like okay well SMV matches and this and that and the other. So like ordinarily when people don't have game skills, right? The SMV things are, you know, you're going to match. You're going to be within one point of a person, you know, for, for, for those things. But these, her perceptions are subjective and they're also based on hind brain sexual triggers and drives. These are primal. And so understanding game skills is knowing how to hit those primal triggers you know are you you're still there paul or did i fade out let's see i don't think i faded out maybe i did let's put the phone on airplane mode it froze. Did I freeze as well? <laughs> wow, there we go. Okay. Ah, you're back. Uh, what the fuck happened there? <laughs> Man, I gotta get my I gotta get my Wi-Fi checked out, dude. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. It happens, Paul. I mean, everybody knows we're professionals. <laughs> every, every, everything's coming up choppy on my end holy crap all right so one second let me um i don't know what to do about this actually um well sorry audience dude fucking, all right hopefully we can uh, everything is now not i don't know why everything's shit now all of a sudden fuck me Dude, technology pisses me off like nobody's business right now, dude. Like, <laughs> this is me actually mad right now. <laughs> oh, I do not want to be on the other end of that. Oh, well, I'm taking over for uh, a little bit. So what Paul was saying, the whole sexual market, uh, sorry, the SMV chart, let's say not at the 1 to 10, is first of all geographical, and there is a certain taste to it. Uh, a demographic as well. Let's say you have a guy who looks like me, leather jacket, bit of long hair, or whatever. I would, let's say, par do well in a biker scene or a concert scene or whatever. Paul, big jack motherfucking guy, military, you name it. Uh, he would probably very well be great in the nightclub scene is one thing I can think of. And or I don't know if you guys know what that is, but like Tomorrowland and things like that. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Hi. Can you hear me? Uh huh. <laughs> can you hear me? I was entertained. Yeah, I can hear you fine. I was entertaining the troops with uh, saying that the <laughs> SMV chart, the nine to ten for guys and even women, is mostly demographic based and geographical. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
It's very interesting. It's true. And I was going to, the point I was making before, man. So here's how I, I solve tech problems. I went downstairs, I took my router and I went poof, poof, <laughs> like this. And I came back up and my thing was on. Yeah, bro. Like I need to, <laughs> I need, this is why I hired an assistant. I got to have her uh, figure out what's going on. With my You'll, stuff. Be amazed. <laughs> You'll be amazed how many times just hitting technology works. Right. <laughs> it does. It does, just bashing the shit out of it like hey that's what it is okay. i know that's my solution to uh problems when i don't know the answer so <laughs> you remind me of a friend of mine and this was so long ago he was uh he actually liked a girl and all of a sudden he looks at me he's like jack i hate emotions i'm like why well they're annoying i'm like how come well the thing is every time i find something annoying i hit it but i can't hit emotions like wow nice that's pretty funny. <laughs> That's good. So, so as the point I was making before is like, yeah, when you when you get into a girl's hind brain, you know, you're hitting attraction triggers, and your SMV can do that without you doing anything. That's the whole idea. But your actual communication, connection, and interaction with that person is what's going to elevate or take it to another level, you know? And that's what, <clears throat> that's, that's that wow factor, that it factor, you know, that's a thing that's different than just the cold hard truth of how tall you are, how built you are, whether your face is symmetrical. Right. And so we're very lucky as men that we have a lot of ways to increase our attractiveness to women and particularly communication and game is a, is a, is a me major key factor to that. And um, we can instill and inspire those those emotions, you know, in a girl that makes her feel attracted. You know what I mean? And she'll yeah. she'll respond to that, and that's good. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick little, more or less, five minute monologue here on um, seeking arrangements because that was part of the title, you know. So so the, I have a, I have a lot of uh, clients, and I've I've done this. Check this out myself, but it's been a while. Like my my circumstances, I'm in an LTR, so I rarely need to source online. Um, if we bring in, you know, other girls or something, whatever, you know what I mean. It's I'm usually sourcing those, um, not online. But I do talk to you know women online. There's actually one in particular I'm talking to who's real nice, real nice, but I don't want to blow that privacy. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the thing. So I don't want to be sharing like the stuff we talk about in private, you know what I mean? On my YouTube channel. Like that's like, this is crazy to me, but mm -hmm. um, guys will send in texts and stuff like that. And we can go cause they will, they want to get their stuff reviewed and they can be anonymous and we can kind of look at what they're doing. And I like it better that way. Cause it's real too. I feel like a lot of the text example stuff, that uh, people are doing on YouTube, they're very contrived to me. You know what I mean? They're missing. There's some some that do a good job, but I think you know this couple I've seen. I feel like I don't know. Is that really how an exchange went, or did you have your buddy with a phone <laughs> on the other end, and you yeah, guys contrived I, I know, this conversation? I know what you mean. And just to add from experience, I found that there really isn't a be all end all to text game or whatever. No, to I, to any of it. You know? No, I, I found out that like with with dating apps like Tinder and Bumble or whatever. Well, in all honesty, Bumble is absolutely atrocious because girl, girls can't open for shit. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, we yeah. have this entire Internet space about how men could open and then they come along with, hey, and then, oh, wow, now <laughs> we're conversating. But OK, what I wanted <laughs> to say is when she's into you already on that physical level, she'll make it work. You can... <laughs> Sometimes say anything you want. She'll just let it go. She'll just be like, "Mate, hey, I already want to fuck you. The only thing you have to do is just get us there. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It, you can get away with a lot more, certainly when you're attractive. So first actionable tip number one is you have to max your profile. That's one of the mistakes I see guys making is they don't max out that profile. Look, and so this is, you know, the audience here, this is, um, you have, you're actually building a fantasy. All right. If you've never met the girl in person, you can't have an actual human connection. We're not even um, evolutionarily designed to make a human connection over a screen. All right. So you're making, you, you don't actually, you're not actually building real rapport. What you're doing is you're making a connection between your avatar or your presentation of what you are on the internet with their presentation of who they are on the internet. And it's very different than an actual human connection that you can make even better over a phone call. Than you do over a text or hey, look at my dating apps and swiping. 
And so people get confused and they, I think, and they think that they're making this connection with this person. And they even personalize the ignoring, for example, some of the ghosting behaviors and stuff that especially the younger women are prone to doing. They internalize that. They take it personal because they feel like they're in a, in a real exchange with somebody where it'd be very rude you know what I mean? To just sort of drop off in the middle of a conversation and not reply. But that's because they that's their thinking wrong. It's not that. It's actually two avatars talking. And so what you have to do is you have to build fantasy. Part of that is building the best presentation of yourself. Now, when they see you in person, there has to be some congruence there or else, you know, you can't be like, put pictures of uh, good looking Jack here up on your profile. And then you look like, you know, you know, somebody else or whatever. You look like maybe you weigh, uh, you know, 500 pounds. You can't catfish her, right? So it has to be congruence, but you want to present things to the highest level. Cause she will assume that the weakest uh, link, whether it's the, that bad photo of yourself, you put in your, your, your profile or that goofy ass thing you wrote in your description, but most of it's photo related you're, she'll assume you look like your worst photo or worse. That's what her assumption will be. So you have to get rid of your bad photos and you have to max out your good photos and make sure that they look good and that you present a high SMV with your photos. I had a client the other day ask me like, dude, I built my own house. I, I make, I'm a good earner. I got a classic car. How do I present this stuff that look like a douchebag? Where's your photo of you and a bunch of buddies hanging out in your front yard and maybe a couple girls, social proof photo with your house in the background? Where's your photo with you looking good in a professional, you know, well, not edited like to make you look different, but edited to put, present you in the best light with you with your classic car, you know? Yeah, like why not have a picture at a car show? It, it, there you go, right? So these are social proof things and you want to build – um, your social media accounts, like your marketing plan or like your, that's like your landing page. And then your dating apps will spin off of that. So my social media, like Facebook, I got my top photos there that are going to present my SMV. And then I can draw from there to throw that on my Tinder account, for example. So you mm -hmm. got to put the time guys don't put the time and energy into this. They think, well, I'm going to present me as me. Who cares? They put like lousy photos up there. And then they're, they're getting like fat girls and, you know, train wrecks that are matching with them. And they're not matching with anybody hot and they're not, and they're wondering why that is. You have to have this stuff maxed. Um, I had a guy who was um, running text game on somebody recently, uh, one of my clients, and he kept getting like put in like the beta category and I couldn't figure it out. And then I was like, let me see your profile again. Like, cause we looked before, but I went and looked at it. He had removed some photos and the one that he had made him look like a beta, made him look real weak. It was not a good photo. It was just one photo. He was like, eh, you know, and I was like, what the fuck are you doing, man? And then, so we went back into his photos, picked good ones, got rid of that. And now he looks fuck. Now he's getting better matches. You know what I mean? Because I know I, what you mean. If there's, yeah. if there's like one thing I would advise against, like no matter what, don't do the open mouth smile. <laughs> I don't know why, but just don't. For right. some odd reason that has, First of all, like on a physical level, it kind of repels me when guys do that. And second of all, I just know 100% that that will not get you any good results. Either smirk, which is a good one, or don't smile. But don't do right. that goofy chimp-like face where you're showing your teeth to show, problem. yeah, to show the <laughs> alpha chimp that you're not Soy dangerous. Face. Exactly. That one. That yeah, one. don't do that one. That's very unattractive. So uh, Ian asked, how do you max out your profile when you have no pictures? You get pictures, man. You have to do it. This is part of the work you got to do. You know, oh, wait. And do you, that's a good one. Do you get a photographer? How would you show, show, show social proof? What I did, I have a friend who is a graphic designer. So he mm -hmm. already had a camera and things like that. And he knew what he was doing. I'm like, uh, hey, I want these kinds of pictures. He's also my best friend. So he was into Tinder as well. He's like, yeah, nice. sure. But we're going to try it out for me as well. And we kind of were trying to hack Tinder together. Was, that was fun. That was like an actual experiment of swapping notes. And that's how we got our openers. And cool. With, with bio, we both concluded it doesn't really matter. Bio is just put Keep some 
keep it short and list little tidbits about yourself that that, that dhv without you look like you're trying hard yeah that's what, that's what, what i found yeah. what i have now and it's a bit of a social experiment i tried it before it kind of got the results i wanted but i'm doing it again now because i've got different pictures it's just good girls swipe left bad girls bend over just see what happens <laughs> because it's 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 outrageous it just is outrageous plus the fact most of the guys have bios that are boring mm -hmm. they yes. don't do anything now with this first of all the girls i don't want who are on there to just get attention or whatever probably will be like oh that's all outrageous and they'll swipe left on me the girls yeah. who are yes girls who are the ones you want will most definitely swipe right and the ones who are intrigued will swipe right so you've got the there baby go. girls and the yes girls all in one blow yep that's awesome interested and intrigued are part of that fantasy building i'm going to do a, a screen share for a, a second i tried to do this last time and um let's see if it works because i, I think i fixed it and boom, we got a screen share. And look at all that mess. Nice. Shows up on the screen. And so let's move it to, I'm going to go, uh, actually, do I want to show? I'm going to show this real quick. You might find this interesting too. So everyone's got a little technique or method. Here's my flow chart. Can you see that flow chart? Jeff? Yeah, I see. All right. So here's my flow chart, right? So everybody has like a thing. This is, I've covered this in a previous video. I'm just going to cover it real quick. Okay. So you make your initial contact, right? That's your opener, or sometimes she opens you. And so what you want, here's kind of what I'm doing. When I, when I speak to her in the beginning, like even having a good opener or having a good question is building curiosity. She doesn't know me. I'm an avatar on the internet. She, she doesn't know my SMV yet nothing right she she's just I'm, I'm one of 30 guys who is messaging her that within the last few days okay mm -hmm. so i need to build curiosity if she's curious she's going to engage me in a conversation so that's the first thing minimally is just building curiosity and um i'll get to the ghost and the takeaway part in a second but from there i'm building curiosity and with with that initial opener or that initial first few exchanges and then I'm wanting to move into building investment and creating fantasy. Those kind of happen almost simultaneously, but investment is where she's more curious about me and she starts to ask me questions. So it starts off with me talking a little, even a little bit more sometimes and, and trying to, I'm, I'm engaging her. You know what I mean? Asking her about some feature on her photo or, oh, you, you have a dog, what kind of dog, like whatever, you know? So those are the indirect stuff. You know what I mean? You can go direct if, uh, it, you know, with sexual signals, but that's a whole nother top conversation here, but just so you're building investment and investment is when she is interested in replying to you. She's giving you more detailed responses and she's then asking you questions. So that's how you know that she's got an investment. And then you can also build fantasy from there. So this is where you get into things like travel questions or what will we be doing this weekend if we we're going to hang out um, you know, or whatever, stuff like that. You know, it's like, uh, you know, if we're, if we're, if we're, if you're coming over, what do you think is going to happen? All right. <laughs> Example saying that in a, in an exchange, it would, would build this idea of, well, she's coming over and what does she think is going to happen when she comes over? So it's a way of being, you know, and these are, I'm talking in generalities, not specific techniques. Now mm -hmm. with this, you're screening her. Okay. So when, if she's, if as she's she's building this investment, explaining more things about herself, she's telling things about herself and the way she's engaging you. You're seeing if she's DTF, if she's wasting your time, if she's you know gonna meet up with you and be a pain in the butt. You know what I mean? A lot of yeah. times, you know, like if she's a crazy person, or if she's you know gonna be a real bitchy, annoying person to hang out with. You you should be screening this stuff out. Some of these guys come from a place of scarcity. And they're they're just trying to get the date with anybody. Don't do that, right? I don't care what she looks like. If she looks like she feels like she's gonna be a train wreck, you know what I mean? Then you need to you need to, to move on to something else. And of course, you should be sourcing several women so you're not focused just on one girl. I and know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Like, I've had it now. I've had it a couple of times where I went on a date. Um, she was showing interest or whatever. And then you go to make a move and then all of a sudden she gets cold and it's like, oh, it's going too fast for me and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Which I didn't want to be as direct in my text before I went on a date. 
but mm -hmm. after experiencing that now for a couple of times they have given me no choice where it's like right. hey i don't want to be this blunt but i <laughs> have to be otherwise i'm wasting my time this is not a platonic thing yeah and again with the yes girls they won't mind you being that blunt but there are girls out there who will use you for your time yeah for 100 percent. that's an that's a very good point you guys got to remember that women uh, you know, I think Rolla said, uh, you know, attention is the uh, what the coin, coin of, the of the realm. I've been saying that for a long time uh, that attention is currency. You know, I've been saying that for years because it is. They're they're driven for their social their biological drive is driven towards um, seeking attention and seeking social approval. You know, that's how they increase their value in their in the tribes back in the tribal days, and so they seek attention out and they'll get attention from guys on Tinder and they'd have no intention of meeting up with those guys. That attention is giving them the courage and the self-esteem and the SMV to go pursue the guys they actually want to bang. You know what I mean? And so they'll waste time with these guys who are putting a bunch of attention into them, which is why when you, when you're conversing with these girls, you're trying to draw them in to an investment and into a fantasy of what it would be like to be with you not showering them with attention, showering them with compliments, letting them know how attracted you are to them. She, she knows she's attractive. She needs to see you as somebody that she wants to be with. That's hypergamy. She needs to feel like you have options with women or, and, and that makes, you know, means that she needs to try to engage you or else she's not going to be one of those options. Right. And so back to the little, uh, uh, thingy oh that's the that's the text is whoop that's the one thing where was i <laughs> hold on I'm, oh it, my audience knows how bad i am with technology and they laugh at me all the time so it's a lot of fun oh um, no so sorry. it's it's I, totally yeah. fine no it's hilarious like i'm a, a wreck all right so so then back to so then close and then confirm so this is where you close the meet you know the meeting she's coming over you're going there or you're meeting someplace neutral right um there's been a lot more closes oriented towards come over or which I used to not do because I wanted to screen these women and screen out the crazies. I'm not just bringing some crazy girl to my house is going to throw a brick through my window later because, you know, I won't marry her or something or, you know, whatever. So, or some ex-boyfriend she didn't tell me about that comes and finds me or something. Right. And so I, I would always screen and meet in a public place, but with COVID restrictions that turned into more, you know what I mean? Going to people's houses, which is fine. So close that meeting and the confirm is because the flake rate has increased a ton over the last, I mean, se couple years, definitely decades. And the flake race rate increases with the, the younger the girl is, the more likely she's going to flake. And so a confirm is just like we make definite plans time or whatever. Let's say we're meeting on a Tuesday. We make those plans on a Friday or something when we're texting around the weekend. And so we're supposed to hang out Tuesday. I might just shoot her a quick message on that Tuesday morning, like, hey, how was your day? Or how was your weekend? Oh, mine was good. How was yours? Great. Looking forward to seeing you tonight. Boom. That's it. I don't, that's my confirmation. You know, I just engage her real quick, you know, let her know that, hey, we're meeting up later. That greatly reduces the flake rate, really reduces it to about almost zero, I find. Um, I, now, what, go ahead. Sorry. Well, yes and no. I tend to, when, when I get a match and contact information and things like that, I try to schedule the date as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. as fast, you because, do? The, okay. because the longer you take, the easier it is for her to flake. But that's a good mm -hmm. one. Actually. This Max. is true. Yeah. And um, I don't text them at all anymore. As soon as that date is set, I'm like, okay, see you then. And then what usually happens is that they text you with some bullshit or whatever. I've had this a couple of times. Where it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. oh, well, could we do later or blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm already there. And if you don't open up, I'll just leave. Guess who will? Yeah, open? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's um that's a good, you know, so if I'm scheduling it like next day or something, um, or, you know, within the next 48 hours, I don't do a confirm. So that's a really good point. When I when I'm saying the confirm, I'm I'm really talking about more than 48 hours out. Oh, um yeah. you're you know, you're closing the meetup quick, which is cool. Um, especially for casual things like, you know, the first thing should be real casual, like a 10 minute 
coffee or drink or something to see what she's like, right? And so in that case, closing quick is is good. In fact, I'll close in day day game or like when I first meet a girl, I'll close right there. What are you doing right now? Let's go grab a drink real quick. You know, I'll close it right there and then continue the conversation, build that connection. And then we, I mean, there's times that sex has happened that way, but that's not even the goal. The goal is to vet her out for further meetups. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but yeah. De depending on what your goal is, because what I'm getting from you right now is that you mostly want to vet maybe for a bit more long term. Sort of um, kind of. So yeah, I'll, I'll go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. I'll explain. Yeah. Not per se an LTR, but more like, hey, I kind of want to be able to see this one more often. I sure. go usually from the perspective, because in all honesty, I have had same night lays with girls who after that I've been in a relationship with for two years. So the whole, oh, she begs on the first date. She's not a quality <laughs> woman. Bullshit. <laughs> Bull fucking shit. Yeah. Greatest women I've had relationships with. I fucked them the first day. Yeah, right. So why That's... are they your exes then? Because we wanted other things. Boo fucking who. But yep. um, that has changed my perspective on the whole, let's grab coffee first and things like that, whatever. I'm more into the whole, does she want to meet up as fast as possible? If that's a yes, go. If she's giving me these hurdles to jump over or the whole, mm -hmm. I don't know, and blah, blah, blah. Then I'm like, oh, I don't feel like it anymore. I, I'm already yeah. out because I'm used to, or not per se used to, but I have experienced girls who would jump, crawl under barbed wire to see. Yeah, me. absolutely. That's kind of what I'm going for. I don't care if it's the first date or the first hour or whatever. If she yeah, wants yeah. to see me and she puts in the effort, that's the one I want. Yeah, I 100% agree. And so what, what I'm building during this, whoops, wrong one again. Oh, we'll go over that in a second. What I'm building during this, no, I don't know what buttons to press. Um, what I'm building during this um, interaction here is um, I'm building that, um, what was I going to say? That, that uh, I was going to say. Oh, um, yeah. No, I, I'm a little lost in my train of thought. That's all right. But um, yeah, basically, like with with, I'm building this kind of fantasy attraction and investment with her here, right? And so, like sometimes, in in the reason, like so with pandemic stuff too, when they're going to come to your house, or if I'm going directly to her house and we're going to bang, sometimes there's more that has to happen in the exchange. So, like in my first when I first was doing like dating market pickup, all that stuff. I was strictly in person day game, night game guy, you know, and um, I was closing really quickly. Exactly what you're saying. Oh, LTR vetting. That's what, I'm, that's what I was trying to tell you. So during this process that starts during the texting process and when I'm building fantasy into the actual meetup, I'm taking it, it. It has to be very socially calibrated. So what, what I teach, like my game is based on a very strong internal frame, internal game, you know, that's, that's very strong. So you have, a, you work on that alpha presence and you present yourself as an alpha person, right? That's, that's, that's the paramount of it. So with that strength, what you're doing is you're not, you're able to go into these encounters with women without worrying about yourself. You know, you're confident, you know, that you're going to do the right things. And if you don't do the right things, that's okay. You'll, you'll be fine. And you just go in with that confidence. And then from there, I don't have to worry. So if I'm not worrying about me, well, now I can pay attention to her and then have a strong amount of empathy for her. What are her thoughts, feelings, emotions, perceptions, all those things. And when I can really understand her, now I can take it to where I want I don't necessarily vet for LTRs, especially with short-term plates, but my mindset is that even for casual partners, I want to pick the ones that are going to be the best time, which means the ones that are not toxic. You know what I mean? Generally speaking, my best plates or short-term casual sex partners are girls who would be a good LTR for somebody. You know what I mean? And My so, criteria for that might be pretty low. Is she? <laughs> but seriously, like, is yeah, she yeah. enthusiastic? You just have to chart. Like, investing, yeah, yeah. investing sure. to me from her is yeah. just responding these days. It's like, is she interactive with me? That yeah. to me is already in 
uh, investing, that's enthusiasm. Is she giving me hurdles or is she making it easy for me? Because I, I get yes. pretty quick to the point, like, hey, what do you drink, tea or coffee? She's like, coffee. Well, we need to do that together. She's like, okay. Like, well, I'm free today. Well, me too, T. Here's my number. <laughs> and then you go for it. That's that's my vetting. That's that's my criteria. Is she yeah. receptive? That's the word I was looking for. Oh, receptive. Was, yes. And that's and you're and you're picking up on that, you know, through the interaction. And the other part is that I'm I'm teaching guys how to build that too. Cause sometimes that was why I was gonna show that stupid chart again. I couldn't remember why am I showing this chart and make this point. Now I do. So sometimes when a guy engages a girl. To build curiosity there's like nothing it's like a dead conversation oh, yeah. um i oh i didn't i didn't uh, screenshot it dude it was a good one i was going to screenshot and share today um where this guy had well i'll explain it in a second but so th there's like a dead conversation here she's ghosting he's reopening her you know what i mean you might have to do that like a couple of times and it's not a big deal some guys get really caught up in that like oh you know, she doesn't have genuine desire dude she doesn't know you this is a, it, you are an avatar to her among 30 other avatars. Do not take it personally. You know what I mean? It's not like you've had sex with her and now she's ghosting you. You know, it's, it's, she's ghosting you, which happens, uh, which, which happens, but yeah, it, it's just like, you know, you can't, guys can't take that personal. You're trying to build this, you know, curiosity investment fantasy amongst so much stimulation out there in the world. It, you can't, you know what I mean? It's not a personal attack on you when she doesn't remember to message you back or she's not invested in you yet. And so that back to investment, building this curiosity, he, they might draw, try a few shots and then finally the one thing hits just right and he draws her in and now he's building investment fantasy. And by the end of the conversation, you're getting that, that investment that you're talking about, Jack. But in the beginning, they didn't get that. And this is especially important for guys with maybe a little bit lower SMV or guys who, you know, are not looking like super Chad, awesome, hot dude on the Internet. You know, they might have to draw them in and shoot their shot a little bit. That's OK. You know, it's it's once you once you hit those attraction triggers and she likes you and wants to meet and maybe wants, you know, and then you, you draw that attraction out. And she wants to have sex with you. You're fine. You know what I mean? And so that's, that's what I was meant to say about that, about building investment. But, you know, you're outcome independent about this, meaning, okay, I opened her, she ghost. I just, op I talked to another girl uh, on the app. I talked to another girl. This one's more invested. I'm going out with her tomorrow. Okay. But then girl that was being, you know, one word answer girl who wasn't not interested, but wasn't really giving me a lot. She becomes more interested like two weeks later. So last, last week I shared a text where a dude was in an exchange with a girl. She ghosted him and then she hit him up a month later for sex specifically. Want to come over and, and bang real quick was literally the message. So that's how that goes. You know what I mean? So sometimes you just build it and then see what happens. You know, you're outcome independent about it. And that's what I find tends to be good. Um, I'm going to share a couple because I know I'll, I'll get off the rails God, we need to do like a three-hour show, man. I have a consult at at, at one in my PM my time, or else. Um, where was I gonna go with this? Ah, text game. <laughs> Can I open it? <laughs> oh, why don't you open? <laughs> okay, all right. So we'll share some stuff. Why oh, is like, dude? I I need to call. Oh no, here I had it here. Okay, cool. So this um. Just a couple quick ones, and we can just give some feedback. You know, I'll get your feedback on it. These are more or less. Uh, this one was pretty successful, so share a successful one. So opens opens this chick. He says, "Oh, uh, looks comfy." Sends her a picture of a cat sit, sitting in this weird position. I think from the explanation, she had a really. It was one of her photos or something. Then she had like a really uncomfortable. So like she's uncomfortable, but trying to like really show herself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so he was he was, he was kind of nagging her, making fun of her. So she responds, ha ha, F off. And he responds, got to look original and sexy somehow, though I get it. And so she goes, oh, so I don't look original and sexy. So he's kind of negging her. She calls her him out, a little bit of a, of a shit test there. He responds with, in your other pics, maybe. Oh, man, I, I would have gone for should I? Something like that. <laughs> right. So he goes, in your other pics, maybe, which was all right, that's good. Like he's still, he's not caving. Right. Um, but he's also saying, yeah, yeah, maybe you're a little bit sexy. 
you know, not insulting her. So he's, he's softening that blow of his neg there. So she, then he, then he double texts again. He says, how, how about in not like one right after the other, right? He goes, how about in person? And I, and I, I, I think someone to say, I am going to think, am I, am I going to think you are sexy and original when we get together? I think is what he meant to text her. Mm -hmm. She says, LOL, what makes you think we're getting together? So now she's just shit testing them, right? He goes, ha ha. All right. So he cuts right to the meat of it. This is good. Sometimes you're in this dance with this person, you know, when you're doing pickup where it's a bit of theatrics, Ryan Stone did a video on kayfabe. He talked, he mm. compared it to pro wrestling, right? Where, you know, it's fake, you know, they're not really fighting, but they're doing this performance and that's kind of what you're in. But sometimes when you're in this performance and she's testing you hard, it's very valuable to cut right through the BS and call it like what it is. Right. Yeah, and so but got, he, went, he went way fast on this one to be all he went, he went fast. He did. Um, but that's all right. You know, I mean, there could have been a different way of handling it. And this, again, that's why I like doing it like this, man, because these aren't perfect. You know what I mean? Oh, oh none yeah. of them. You should have seen mine. I mean, mine, <laughs> no, in all honesty, again, like I'm very, I'm just very direct when it comes to it because I've experienced girls where it's like one, two, three messages and the coffee date is set. Yeah. And as soon as I get even a bit of resistance, I'm already bored. I already don't feel <laughs> like it anymore. And I'm kind of like, oh, no, I, this could go way easier. Clearly, you have better things to do. So I have as well. Goodbye. Yeah. And then yeah. I go to someone else. And yeah, it's a numbers game. The results aren't as high, but they are good. If you know what yeah. I mean. I do. No, I do. I get, I get it. And um, and that's and that's okay. That's why I like having you on, man, because you're gonna share some different experiences and different takes on things. And guys need to decide what they're gonna do in their own life with this stuff, you know, um, and how they want to approach it. So, anyway, so he responds, yes, he he shoots a shot like he goes, he goes fucking cuts right to the middle of it. I think he just felt he now you understand too, he's sourcing several women, they're all hot, so he doesn't really care. Like when he sends this message, if she just responds badly, he doesn't actually give a crap. And that can be useful too. So he goes, ha ha, because you swiped on me. We are talking and put we are talking and putting up with my jokes. So you must find me attractive. I obviously find you attractive, and that's despite your picks, not because of them. <laughs> so that is goes, a good one. <laughs> that was pretty, so he cut right through the bullshit. So she's like, LOL, okay, maybe. And so she's still talking to him, gives him this maybe. And so then he responds with, so what are you doing right now at this moment? And then she says, just talking to a guy who maybe might be attractive, maybe. So she's going for this. She drew her in pretty good with that, that response. And he goes, oh, besides talking to me, and he makes a sexual joke here. In other words, where's your non-text hand right now, bad girl? Wow. <laughs> she goes, LOL, you're sick. And she goes, not doing anything, just laying here. He goes, me too. So she's not giving it like what appears to be a ton of investment, which is okay. See, girls can be shy too. You know what I mean? Girls, they might not know, but she's interested at least in his attention. We don't know where it is yet. Well, actually we do. When she responded with talking to a guy who might or might not be attractive, that's a, that's a pretty good sign of investment there. And so her shorter answers and responses here, I wouldn't look at as a bad thing. I would just keep holding frame, which she does. So it was, oh, oh you're sick. She was not doing anything with this line here. He says, me too. Come over and let's get to know each other over a drink. We're close, I think. He goes right for the close. So I'm going to you know, say something about this real quick, going right for the close. So you can reopen and go for closes more than once when you get objections. You know what I mean? So sometimes guys get caught up into looking for that perfect close and they feel like if they get blown out or whatever, that they can't recover from it. If it's done right, that's not exactly true. So she could have said, no, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. He would have been like, oh, that's cool. Maybe some other time ended it reopened her in a few days, you know, that, and I've seen that work out. I've had that work out for me plenty of times, mm -hmm. but he goes, she goes really just like that. You know, like, she's like, wow. Like, cause this guy was so direct that was ended up being actually very attracted to her. Um, many guys are not very direct. And so women are kind of starving for that alpha behavior. So, as long as it's socially calibrated, of course. So then he says, get here. We will kill a drink. You can even bring the wine if you want, but I have stuff here. 
If we hit it off, cool. If not, then we know. No big deal, right? So he reduces the stress, reduces her anxiety. This is not a big deal. We're just going to hang out. So he was kind of being a bit sex, you know, had a, had a, a bit of sexual overtone and some of those other messages. But with his clothes, it's like, hey, relax. We're going to have a good time. Notice how he didn't ask her for permission, didn't ask her for anything, just to get over here. And then the only thing he said, hey, was a confirmation. No big deal if we don't hit it off, right? She goes, yeah, I guess you're right. That's better than texting. And then, then she double texts, let's do it. Fuck it. What's your address? And so she ends up ends up meeting up with them. So I thought that was a good um, little bit of uh, success or demonstration of success. Um, anything you would have done, I mean, it, it worked out, you know what I mean? But anything you would have done differently there, Jack, or, you know, if... In all honesty, yeah, kind of. I would have, I wouldn't have been that direct. In my experience, I've noticed that getting off too sexually via text usually scares a girl off, as in the whole K yeah. tape thing. It's like, sure, she knows what it's about, and the more you kind of address it and push forward to it, gives he the gives her the idea you don't get it at least that's my experience where she's usually like oh never mind this this guy doesn't know how to dance mm -hmm. I mean, like you both yeah. know you kind of twirl around it a bit but the end is all going to be the same uh right I've had instances where direct does really work in all honesty that's usually when you get a match at friday night at 10 p.m you get the message hey what are you up to and then i just respond with either you me i you or we nobody and then it's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, here's my address. That has happened. Not a lot, not a lot, but it has happened. Yep. So what I'm saying is, uh, in my experience, she lets you know when you can be that direct. Um, when she said the whole maybe thing, mm -hmm. and this is me personally, I would have been already turned down by it, where it's like, really, a maybe, never mind. I have yes girls. I'm moving mm -hmm. on. But that's sure. me. Again, this conversation showed it can work out. Me personally, uh, maybe I'm an egocentric son of a bitch. I don't like <laughs> to hear no. I yeah. don't like to hear no. So when I get a maybe, when it's lukewarm, I'm already not interested anymore. It's pulling mm -hmm. teeth for me. And that yeah. doesn't mean I don't like playing. I do like playing. But there's a big difference between lukewarm and mm -hmm. the game sort of mm -hmm. say. Sure. Well, and we've had, we had like some, some that I showed last week and actually one that I, I don't think I'm gonna have time to show it. Cause I only got about five minutes left here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna have time to, so, um, I'll just say, I'll use his, his first name, uh, you know, so I'm not gonna dime my last name. Out, but Shane, the thing is, Shane, what you just showed, it worked. So maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, right. And, and so my, um, um, let's see, oh, I'm getting back in here. So, um, am I done? Am I done screen sharing? Yeah, I am. Okay, cool. So like my, it, it's, um, I had some stuff. It depends. See, and this is where my method is based really on social calibration. And so sometimes they start off a lot of times, especially really hot girls, you know, we're talking those tens and stuff, man. Sometimes they start off because they're getting so much attention. They start off like kind of lukewarm and they're really testing it's where they, I'm more concerned about where they end up. And I don't really care. Like in a, in a sense that, you know, when, if I'm primarily using dating apps, I'm sourcing several girls is not a big deal. You know, I'm eking out 20 minutes of my day to go through my messages. The ones that are, show the most interest, of course, are the ones that get more of my time, you know, but sometimes you'll have these, it's just a shoot. It's just a quick shoot your shot text, you know? It's not a big deal for me. And if it blows up, who cares? You know, if she didn't, uh, you know, show interest at first, but shows interest later, then that's fine. I've had plenty of situations where she started off cold, like lukewarm and ended up extreme desire, including my LTR I'm with right now. I mean, her, de her desire is through the roof. Now I'll give a quick, now this is a day game thing, not a text game thing, but we were at a bar. And um, she had just been hit on by some weird, some big dork who had, who bought a, a brought his puppy into the bar. And he was clearly trying to, you know what I mean, use that to get girls. And I could tell like her whole demeanor was annoyed, <laughs> you know, and um, just with that life. I and had I, that in Istanbul once, but go on. 
Yeah. So I just came up to her and I put my drink down like in her space. And it, it, so I, she was sitting at the bar. I came around cause I was going to order another, another, I put my drink down right in her space. Didn't say anything. And then I watched her eyeballs travel from my hands up my arm, look me up and down. She, she looked and I watched her signals from her body were <laughs> attracted immediately. Okay. She, cause her eyeballs did, did a little bit of dilation. You know, she centered herself a little bit in her hips when this is body language stuff. Now when her hips center a little bit, you know, that it's real subtle. It's li literally the difference between here, and here. Okay. Well, that's her initial reaction. Her literally her reproductive system is pointing towards me. This is a indicator of interest, but she went from here. And after looking me up and down, she then she went like this and <laughs> turned around. Okay. I've run into this many times because I can be an intimidating person. And so what happens is they look me up and down their chimp brain says, bang him, have babies. Her other parts of her protective brain says he could probably kill you or he's probably stupid and, you know, picks things up, puts them down. He's probably an a-hole. All the social conditioning from guys who look like me and what she thinks comes flooding in. And then she draws away. She starts to drift away very quickly. And some of this is protecting her own self-esteem too, because I'm here presenting like a high SMV guy, even though she's high SMV, you know what I mean? She's maybe thinking like, well, this guy, it's a way to protect like this alpha is not going to be good for me. Right. So I'm, I'm going to put all these judgments on him and that's exactly what it was. And then I just kind of like said to her, I said something like, I forgot what I said. I said, well, that's a pretty cute guy there with the dog, huh? <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I can't remember. And she just goes, oh my God, I want you to see, you guys look like you're hitting it off pretty good. I mean, maybe you should get his number. So I, I, I so I started engaging her like that. Right. And she's like, oh my God, that guy's such a dork. And I'm, and I'm laughing. We're, now we're both laughing. I'm like, yeah, I've been watching him do this now for probably the last 30 minutes. Uh, go up to different girls trying to use his puppy to get in their pants, you know? And he's, she's just like, dude, he's an idiot. And then we, I'm like, what do you, I'm like, let's get something, you know, I had the, the, the bartender get us drink. I didn't buy it for anything. We just, just bought it, got us our drinks. And then we got engaged in it, which is fine. You buy a drink, girl, drink if you're hitting it off. I don't care, but we just didn't. And then we just engaged in conversation. So I broke through all those barriers. She started off, you know, with, without, without, with a ton of barriers to desire for me ended up when I, with, I drove her. And her friend to her friend's place ended up making out with me, sending me pictures and wanting to meet up later and all this stuff. It went from uncertain because you got to remember, these girls have a bunch of barriers, too, and psychological barriers that might prevent them. A girl could see you and you could actually resemble them traits or look or something like maybe some guy who dissed her in high school. And she doesn't even think about that. But now she has a negative trigger or reaction to you and she's standoffish or whatever. And this is a girl who could really potentially have a ton of desire for you if you're able to break through it. And so it just, you know, you're just going through, you don't care because you don't care about rejection. And sometimes you'll draw it out of these girls. You know what I mean? You'll find somebody who wasn't that interested is now crazy. And, and there were some messages last week, week where it was like, right. It was right away. Crazy. Like what you're talking about, you know what I mean? Yeah. Immediate interest. Um, this girl from the guy that I, I'll have to show next week, she had immediate interest for him. And then we were, we we're going to critique that text exchange. And, and so there's definitely those, but um, yeah, it just, it's kind of all over the map, dude. I've seen, you know, especially with the young, hot girls, dude, they, you know, a 21 year old, that's like a freaking eight or nine is getting so much attention and she's probably already, if she's not already banging somebody, I mean, she's probably a lot, got, got a lot going on. And so it takes a bit of maneuvering to get through all that stuff. And uh, a lot of them don't even know how to socially interact anymore, in all honesty. So <laughs> you, you, you have to be a bit forgiving. Mm. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're a Zoomer probably. Yeah, I know how this works. Like you're, ad you're addicted to your phone and such. And this is basic human interaction. This is what's called a joke. This is where mm. you laugh. <laughs> That's like, oh, so that's what I'm supposed to do. Oh yeah, yeah. No, but and in I all seriousness, Paul, you're you're not wrong. I'll, I mean, you'd be surprised. I think a lot of guys do not understand how much attention these girls are getting. It is insane. Oh, 
No. Insane. No, they don't. They don't. And I'll just uh, show something real quick, too. It's just for some of the guys in the chat. Again, this is about calibration, too. So a lot of times I agree with you. A lot of times it maybe is go fuck off somewhere then. I don't, I don't care, right? It depends on the context of the maybe. So to go into a uh, share real quick, to go back to that conversation, um, in this particular case, he sh he went, she sh at shit tested him here, right? He was negging her the whole time. Okay, so remember that piece. So she's protecting herself with this shit test. She didn't start off with a shit test. He was being kind of an asshole, making fun of her pics, right? Which is fine. And she's not getting upset about that or mad or ghosting him. So right there, if you're negging a girl and she's still engaging you and even gives you a little bit back, okay, that actually means she's interested. Because if she was not interested in you, she would call you a creep or call you in a bunch of names for negging her or just ghost you. You know what I mean? Probably so ghost. Yeah. Probably ghost nine out of ten. And so depending on how bad the neg was. And so this, her emotions are engaged. So this is means IOI right here. And then when he cuts through all the BS and sends this message here, I have, you find me attractive. I obviously find you attractive. And that's despite your picks, not because of them. All right. She's, he's letting her know like, yeah, dude, like I, I, you're pretty, but that's not going to matter to me. Right. It's like, I, I'm not afraid to joke around with you. So this may be here. I just want to address. So when she goes, LOL, okay, maybe. All right. He's, this is not a maybe like, maybe I'm like, maybe like, maybe we could hang out sometime. You want to hang out? Well, maybe it's not that this is like a, maybe like, maybe I, okay. Maybe you caught me. I, you know what? I am attracted to you. See what it, the difference there? Yeah, I guess? You know what? He yeah. did it great, actually. He called her out on her, maybe. Exactly. That's exactly. right. That's what I'm saying, right? So that's that's how he handled it. You know, it's it's a little different. But obviously, if you ask a girl, like, hey, we should go, ha let's hang out next week when you're free. Oh, uh, maybe. You know, we'll see. I don't know. Then, oh, yeah. The whole, like, I'm, I'm free here. then and then and then. So you yeah. give her the time, she give her the dates, and you see, and you get back, oh, I can't those days quiet right. i'm like then what? give me the dates you are right and exactly. you don't get those then it's done but now yeah. that i see this again i'm like hey wait a minute he's calling her out on her maybe right if he it's got subtle. a maybe after that one okay yeah. then then pull the plug on it exactly and that's what i mean about when and so he was been he's been coach you know coaching with me on this stuff and we've been doing sessions going over his messages and i've been helping him with some of the replies it's really about seeing like having that social calibration and really seeing like, what is it that this girl is saying behind the words? Cause a maybe could mean I'm not interested. I'm not, you know, I'm just, I'm just stealing your attention right now with my replies. I'm really going to be a pain in the butt to hang out with. I'm probably never going to hang out with you. That's what maybes could mean, or it could mean you caught me. I'm actually sexually interested. You've been bantering with me this whole time. And, you know, it, it could mean a couple of things. And to have the social calibration, you know, when you're not caught up in your own stuff, you're just paying attention to her. You can really sort of, you know, sense what's happening and then know where to take it. He knew to take it where he took it. It was actually a good example, in my opinion. But, you know, you're, you're, you're right, though. A lot of times, maybe he's get the fuck out of here i'll go to the next girl you know Dude, what i'm saying for <laughs> one more let's go for one more push mm -hmm. where it's like okay lol okay maybe then you mm -hmm. go for the whole so what are you doing now yeah the response to that will determine your action that's right that's exactly right and that's what i mean this is not a script you know i try to tell guys this is why i focus on internal game and understanding women and understanding these principles of communication because it's not a script. You, if had she has just sort of gave him a blah answer or something after he said that, you know, or she was not engaging to him, yeah, he would have probably just got, he would have done what I if he would have done what I would have suggested, I would not reply. I would have just ghosted the whole conversation. So sometimes you can use ghosting against them, right? They ghost okay. you, but you can ghost them. If I'm not getting the responses I want, I ghost them. And then it's like, oh, you know, and so, and so it, it, that's a DHV right there. But anyway, man, God, there's so much to talk about. I got a, I got a client I'm late for now by about four minutes. Um, we're going to kind of wrap this up. Do you want to um, throw, you got anything you're promoting now, or do you want to just kind of, uh, you know, any final words? 
Uh, any final words, guys? It's not a script. It really isn't. And be aware of girls trying to, well, rob you of your attention on those apps. And be very aware of the fact that there are girls out there who will help you to succeed with them. Mm -hmm. Other than yeah. that, link to my YouTube channel is in the chat right now. I have a live show in, what is it, 11 hours called Red evening together with rob says for the max student geek and sterling cooper is gonna drop by today so that's gonna be fun nice nice if i see you fridays i'm always have a lot of we'll say social things planned always and that's why i generally can't join you on fridays one of these days or times i will but it's the time zone difference and then fridays are like the weekends are are i have a lot of things going on right that doesn't involve the internet for me so um I'll close off uh, with this too, because I, I titled this Seeking Arrangements. We never talked about it. I am going to give a little two-minute spiel on it real quick. Seeking Arrangements can be a valuable way to source women. No, you don't have to pay for hookers, okay? Here's the thing. A lot of girls who are in Seeking Arrangements are, especially the younger ones, they're the 21-year-olds or whatever, to the guys that are their age are immature. They don't understand how to handle women. And so they're looking for an experience, something else. There's two, you can categorize girls on seeking a couple different ways. One is your outright hookers. All right. Another is your girls who are executing strategic pluralism at, uh, in a modern level on a modern way, meaning they want to bang the alpha guy, but they'll sure take the resources from the beta guy. If you'll offer them, if she can extract them from them. So she will be on seeking, try and extract money and, and favors and, and, and stuff from a dude, but the guy that, that establishes himself as the alpha, she'll find hit herself in a plate spinning or casual relationship with him, not asking that dude for money at all. Okay. And then some girls it, so most of these girls are not wanting to be hardcore prostitutes or else they would go be hardcore prostitutes. And the ones with the only fans accounts and they're trying to get your attention, get your money, direct you to their only fans and then, you know, capitalize off of your betaness or whatever. Those girls are the ones that you're not going to pay any attention to. You'll next those ones. But there's a lot of girls out there that want to date an older guy who can pay for experiences basically, who has more resources than the 21-year-old is jobless and lives at his mom's house. And so, you know, when you cut through and you're the alpha guy with these girls and you don't signal or offer money and you just offer the experience and here you are, let's see, you're a 35 year old guy, you make, you know, a good income, you got a good social life, you got things that you're doing. She might want to be a part of that. And that's what she draw, draw her in with. And a lot of these guys are finding these girls are on seeking because they see the men that are on seeking, especially the good looking ones. So if you're actually good looking as or decent looking, right. As, as much higher SMV than if she saw you on Tinder because of the success symboling of being on seeking. So there's plenty of situations where guys have seen the same girl on Tinder or another app and then seeing her on seeking and she doesn't engage them at all you know, or whatever, or it's very little engagement on Tinder. And then she sees him on seeking and that's a DHV that he's on seeking. And so then next thing you know, interest is up and then he games her into a meetup. You don't have to pay these girls a bunch of money for sex. That's, that's the point, but you can source them and have good experiences with good casual experiences with younger, hot girls, especially if you are a older guy with a high sexual market value and be very successful with that. Have have quite a good time and have better results oftentimes than you would on your normal dating apps where you, some of you older guys are on match.com and crap, you know, trying to, you know, run it into single mom train wrecks with a lot of problems, right? And so that's just my final thoughts because I put it in the title. We never even got to it. And I love having I have, Jack on. I have no it was nice having you on. Seeking arrangement. Yeah, no, well, thanks for having me. It's always nice swapping notes, sharing experiences, different perspectives. Heck yeah, brother. You got a lot of good stuff, man. It's awesome. So, yeah, check out Jack's channels. Check out his stuff. And I definitely want to do this again with you sometime, man. Anytime. In fact, open invite. Anytime you want to jump on Friday, dude, we can pick apart these texts text together. I'm, I like your input. So, <laughs> would love to. Would love to. Awesome, brother. Take care, man. Take care, everybody. Yeah.